Hi there, I'm Jason Little, the author of Lean Change Management, and I've been asked to say a little bit about how governments can make use of lean change management given the COVID crisis. So let's get this statement out of the way quickly. It's impossible for anyone to know how to deal with this situation. We're dealing with unknowable unknowns. We're dealing with information that changes on a daily basis, which is drastically different from changes that we are dealing with in our organizations. So when you look at some of the things that uh, at least the Canadian government is doing, daily updates, taking action without a complete plan. A great example would be the stimulus package that the government of Canada has announced for small businesses. So there's plenty of small businesses that can't afford to pay their staff, they're laying people off, and these packages are designed for a certain chunk of these businesses uh, that they'll be given a loan with some uh, some some specific terms that it's interest free. Um, a certain percentage of it will be a grant if it's paid back by a certain date, and um, there is a five year complete uh, term limit on paying this loan back. And the government actually said we're going to earmark this amount of money for this program, so each small business will qualify for this. Uh, the application process was up with all of the financial institutions very quickly, and the application process was very simple. What's the name of your business? What's your business number? What's your phone number? Um, and a checkbox that you've read the terms, and that was it. And they said, you know, the money will show up within five to seven days, and we'll sort out the proper vetting later. So that's one lesson, is in times of extreme uncertainty, taking action sooner without a complete plan because we can't we don't have the luxury we don't have the ability to wait and properly vet everything and come up with a perfect plan now that's obviously an extreme situation compared to what we're facing in our organizations so you could not relate an agile transformation or a digital transformation to the covid crisis it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever but when you actually start to strip away the methods and the frameworks and the models and the ideas what the government of Canada is doing and a lot of other governments around the world are doing is taking action sooner based on the best information that they have right now. Now, one of the things I do talk about a lot is the idea of co-creation and the idea of collaborative decision making and involving the people affected by the change into the design of the change. But it's also a matter of context. You know, we're not moving a bunch of printers to a new floor. We're not implementing SAP. So more of a, we have decided to do this, we are taking this action, works better in this context. In an agile transformation, it's impossible for the leaders at the top to know exactly what that plan should be when they bring change people in to create the plan and steamroll people with that type of plan. In that case, you can be more collaborative, you can be more creative. So I would say that the only lesson really is a strong understanding of your context and an acceptance of the foreign element. So in the Satir change model, there's the idea of when we are in a status quo, some change happens, which, some change happens, which is the foreign element. And that's what sends people in the organization into chaos. A lot of the times, especially in agile circles, you'll see things like um, the word dysfunction used quite a bit. And this is usually an outside perception from Agile coaches. It can be an indication that the organization hasn't accepted the foreign element. You can see in the response from many governments that they have accepted the foreign element. And there are some governments that have not accepted the foreign element. They've tried to cover it up. They've tried to uh, maybe not even cover it up, but just ignore uh, the amount of uncertainty and trends that were indicative of if we don't act now, we will be in trouble later. And you can see that with the trends in the number of cases that have happened. So uh, to close off, I think what many governments are doing is very much aligned with an action-based approach to managing uncertainty. So the lesson for me as a change practitioner is always be aware of the level of uncertainty and the type of change and adapt your method processes and frameworks to that context, which is going to be more likely to help you as you go along.